I'm Patty Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is how to draw Paul Revere, American Revolutionary Patriot. I'm going to take two fingers at the top in the center and I'm going to put a dot. And from that dot I'm going to draw towards the left, straight line, curve line down, and leave it floating. I come back to the dot on going towards the right and I'm going to draw a straight line, curve line, little curve line in, curve line down, and leave it floating. I come right here in the center and I put a dot. And from that dot going up, I'm going to draw a straight line, curve line, and leave it floating. Come back to the dot and I'm going to draw a straight line, curve line up, connect to the right hand side. Now I start right back in and I draw a straight line, curve line, curve line, straight diagonal down and leave it floating. Now I come back up and I take this line and I just draw it until it connects and I come over to this line on the left and I draw straight line, curve line in so that it connects. I come inside and I'm going to start on the right and I'm going to draw a curve line, straight diagonal up, connect, come right here at this indentation, I'm going to draw a little curve line out, curve line down, curve line over, and connect. I come inside and I draw one curve line two curve lines. I come back and I mimic those lines. Curve line in, connect on the left, curve line in, connect on the right. I come back to the left. I draw a straight diagonal and then curve it up, connect on the left, jump over, curve line, curve line up, connect. Come back to the left, put one two little curve lines inside on the left, one, two little curve lines inside on the right. In the center, I draw a straight diagonal down, little curve line, curve line, and leave it floating. Right about here in the center, I draw a straight line, and then I'm going to draw a curve line up, down, connect, come back over to the left, straight line up, and connect. Come over here on the left, <clears throat> excuse me, let's continue this straight diagonal down, curve line down, up, connect. We're going to mimic that line again, straight diagonal, curve line up, connect. Come over here on the upper left, straight line down, straight diagonal in, connect. Come over here on top, we're going to draw a curve line down, curve line down, straight diagonal up, come back to the left, curve line down, and now we're going to continue this line, draw another line, and now a curve line right here. Come up on the right, we're going to draw a curve line down, curve line over, up, connect, Right here at this point, we're just going to draw a straight line down, leave it floating. On this side, on the right, we're going to draw a curve line down and leave it floating. Now we draw curve line up, straight line, little curve line on top. Curve line out, over, up, and connect. Right at this point, we draw a curve line up, little curve line, curve line down, connect. On this side we're going to draw a big curve line, little curve line inside, connect. Straight diagonal out, curve line, straight diagonal up, connect. Inside we're just going to go wavy, 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 wavy line, 
curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, connect. Wavy, wavy, wavy line. Wavy, 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 wavy line. Little straight lines going across. Now we come back over here and we are going to continue this line down off the page. We're going to continue this line down off the page. And right here we're going to draw one, two, three curved lines. Now this might not look quite right, but it is once we start coloring. But first over here on the upper left, we're going to put a dot and we're going to draw a big circle. And inside we're going to write the number 12 for midnight. Then we're going to put triangle, straight line, triangle, straight line. We're going to draw another circle around it and a little curved line on top and then we want it to look like it's got little animation lines like it's glowing. Then over here on the right we're going to put a little baby circle, straight line, triangle, straight line, straight line, straight line, connect, skinny rectangle, connect, and inside we're just going to put like a curve line and we're going to put our animation lines again. This is because that's the lantern that is shining. Okay, let's see how we're going to color this in. Okay, the reason why this looks a little bit bizarre is because he is holding his hand on his chin. He's like going, hmm. So in order for us to see that, I'm taking my multicultural crayons and I'm coloring in his face. And we'll talk about this because this is a kind of a different kind of portrait that you would see in those times. Remember, there's no photography, there's no radio, TV. So if you want to communicate something, you do it through a painting. Now I'm taking my multicultural crayon and I'm coloring his hand. He's got his hand on his face. This is a very famous portrait. You can Google it and look it up and see what I was going for in case you can't figure it out. Okay, so I've got that done so you can kind of see where his face is. Then brown for this space, brown for this space, brown for this space, brown for this space. Then this little skinny skinny topper, this is his hairdo. Remember we're talking 1750s, 17 revolution time. Okay, lots of different hairstyles back then. But this is his. Okay, then I'm going to take my blue and he's wearing a workman's coat, a vest. And that is because this is really a portrait of an American worker. Okay? The Revolutionary War, people wanted and did get involved who were shop owners, normal, average people who decided that they could no longer be under England's control. And they become revolutionaries. And that's why this portrait is so interesting. Because there's no way you would ever think he would look like a revolutionary, but he was. Okay, now, I'm taking my yellow and I'm coloring in my clock. Because according to the poem, Paul Revere did a midnight ride. And that's what this represents. The midnight ride of Paul Revere on this side. Then another part was the one is by land, two is by sea, which was basically saying if the English were coming, he was letting everybody know. If they were coming in through the ports, that was once. If they were coming on land, that was two. So that's this over here. 
Then come all the way down, and this is a teapot. And you might go, why does he have a teapot? That is because Paul Revere was a silversmith. He was a silversmith. He was a shop owner. He made silver, teapots, and spoons, and urns. Now with my red, I'm just going to add my red straight lines, because it is a red, white, and blue kind of guy. And naturally, I always forget something. This is his fingers holding his teapot. So that should be multicultural. Okay, let's see what this looks like all colored in. Okay, so according to the poem, it's Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. And basically, he made his famous ride to Lexington to warn the patriot leaders that there were, the British were coming, the British were coming. And there's some people don't know if that's true or not, so look it up, Google it. Okay, bye-bye.